Aren't they cute? Hello homemakers and mamas out there. In today's homemaking vlog video, I want to talk about how to be a great homemaker. For the most part, today's video is unscripted and I'm going to be speaking straight from the heart. I've got some homemaking things and a little bit of spring stuff going on. If you are new here, hey there, I'm Shayla, an earthy mountain mama and a happy homemaker wife with a homeschool family of eight. I share two to four videos here a month with all things home, from wholesome scratch cooking, homemaking, homeschooling, and homesteading. I'm slightly hippie, but I'm a Christian and I often share a short, sweet devotional in my videos with hopes of being a light in this dark world. I'm no spring chicken like so many similar YouTubers, but I do have 30 years experience in the art of frugal homemaking, a master's degree in herbology, and 39 years experience in the homeschool and homestead world since my husband and I are second generation homeschool and homesteaders. In 2022, after over 20 years of dreaming, we finally acquired our dream mountain homestead. Our home is a fixer upper and still under construction, but would love to have you come along and join us here. So hit that sub button if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you for being here. I know that there is so many channels to watch from and if you're watching this one, thank you. Too cute. They are so cute. Too cute. I know there are other videos out there on this topic. I have a little bit of a unique take or a different perspective, I guess you could say. Since I have one child who is graduating from our homeschool this year and other children quickly approaching adulthood, I feel like my perspective is widening on this topic. Friends, I strongly believe that homemaking for a Christian homemaker is a ministry. In Mark 15, 41, we read about women who followed Jesus and ministered to him. If you look up the meaning of the word ministered in this passage, it's talking about caring for the needs and serving. So essentially these women were serving Jesus and were taking care of needs. One of our top needs as humans is to be fed, to be fed spiritually, to be fed physically. And of course, if you're a mother and you are raising children or attempting to raise Christian children, what higher ministry could a mother have than ministering and discipling one's children? One of the best ways to be a great homemaker is to remember the whole point of Christian homemaking, and it is ministry. Ministering to people's hearts, souls, and bodies. Handling hearts with love is the first rule. And if you're not careful with the people's hearts in your home, you will lose them. So if the whole point of being a Christian homemaker is to minister to the people within the home and that come through the home, then if this fails, then what point is the homemaking journey? The home becomes just an empty shell without the people and the hearts in it. So I think the first thing in becoming a great homemaker is to remember that the purpose of homemaking is to be a ministry and to serve others. In serving others, there are just a few things that matter most. There are the basic things, for example, food. Food's a priority. If we don't have food, <laughs> we will die. <laughs> so food is one of the number one things. Making sure there is good food around and enough food to sustain the body. And depending on your family size, that can be quite a large undertaking. Just cleaned out the fridges and I have a little bit of jelly to use up. So I'm going to make a I can't remember what they're called. There's a name for them. It's it's not my own creation. A uh, galantine or something? I don't remember what they're called. Anyways, this is what I'm making. I'll just show you. When it comes to managing important priorities in your home, it really helps to know exactly how much time you need each day and each week to manage that task. So if you start paying attention to how long managing the meals in your home takes and write that down, this can be extremely helpful as you plan out your weeks. There's a Bible verse. Luke 14, 28, it says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? 
So I have ADHD and there have been too many times I feel like in my life where I've jumped before completely thinking things through. And the reason is simply because I didn't know how to. I used to get really overwhelmed in my days because I was trying to cram too much into a certain time frame without any prior knowledge of how long each task was going to take. When I finally realized that I could time how long each of the activities I was trying to fit into my days took, I realized I was trying to fit something like 26 hour days into 12 hours. So when I found that scripture and realized I could apply it to time management, it helped me realize how important it is to sit down and just think things through a little bit more and plan. So coming back around to meal planning and how this applies to meals, having systems in place for things like this is a major benefit. I find that something that works really well is to have a kitchen day where for a half a day or for a day, I spend it in the kitchen. I get the kitchen tidy and refill things that need to be refilled and also do some planning for the week ahead. So I'll shop my pantries and the freezers and just simply get like a rough idea of what I'm going to be doing that week. It doesn't have to be precise. Just simply getting some meat defrosting in the refrigerators and looking to see what needs to be used up, asking people, (laughs) what they feel like, which for some reason never seems to go very well. It seems like the answer is always, I don't know. (laughs) And I don't know about you guys, but I'm still looking for a recipe of, I don't know. (laughs) That always really gets me. It's like, okay, I'm doing the food preparation here. I'm making it. You could at least (laughs) let me know what you want. That's the easy part, isn't it? (laughs) I also find though, it helps to take the planning one step further and write it down. Otherwise, I may have pulled out certain meat with a certain intention for it and a couple days later, completely forgotten about it. So writing it down in a planner helps a lot. Speaking of planner, that brings me to today's sponsor. I'm excited to announce that you guys, today it's me. I've been working since last August with an amazing designer and together we came up with the perfect ultimate homemaker mom planner. I've even been using this thing for my work. It's got most everything you need for managing your home on one spread. It's got a brain dump page, which is for that mental list that bogs us down, adding to the mom overwhelm. The brain dump page is a designated place where you can just unload all of those to-do all of the things cluttering your brain and get them on paper so that you can do them when it fits, when you can. It's basically a master list where when you're planning out your week, you can go to the brain dump page, scan it over and see what needs to be done first. There is a space where you can write things that have to be done on specific days. But then across from that, there's another space where you can write the things that can be done any day of the week. It's really a great planner, you guys. I was never able to find a planner that completely accommodates my needs as a homemaker. In fact, last year before Crystal, the designer for this planner contacted me, I had been praying about my planner situation and was really frustrated not being able to find one. And so when this happened, when Crystal contacted me, it was like all the pieces fell into place. Crystal has designed a planner too. I will link to that once she has released hers. So be sure to check for the planners in the description box below. I have more to share on the topic of how to be a great homemaker, so don't go away. But I wanna take a break and just show you what's happening in some of these scenes. So what you're seeing is a Monday. This is one of my big cooking days. Over here, I have a big pot of chili that I made for my husband for the week for his lunches. Also for some of our lunches, I'm going to be jarring some of this chili in quantities to make it easy for my husband to just pull out of the fridge and heat up in the morning before he heads off to work. We have some hard boiled eggs. I got the pumpkin pie, brownies, desserts. Over here I'm working on something kind of unique. I've got a bunch of flat angel food cake. I cooked this angel food cake on cookie sheets and I'm going to make tiramisu with it at some point down the road. Today this is just going to go in the freezer and I'm going to pull it out on a probably a Saturday or a Friday for a nice special weekend treat. In these scenes it's getting near the end of the day and I am feeling kind of dead on my feet. So since I did the cooking and have been cooking all day, my older kids are gonna help out with dishes. The 
this evening. I remember a time not very long ago when they were all too little to help. And so all of the cleanup was on me. Frugal homemaking tip here. If you're on a really tight budget, frequent your local thrift stores. Check out these water bottles. They're infusion bottles where you could put berries and things into them, but essentially they're just water bottles. I got them all for the steal of a deal, just a few bucks. I was thinking they would even be great salad dressing container. And now I've got a container homemaking trick. You know how you have a lot of containers and it's hard to find all the lids to fit them and keep it all organized? Well, I was watching this YouTuber dude that my family has been addicted to lately. We just love watching cooking shows. Anyways, we found this, this new channel and the guy was talking about tricks he learned working in industrial kitchens and restaurant kitchens that can save anybody time and money. One of the things that he shared was instead of investing in using tons of containers of various sizes with various sizes of lids, just get deli containers. They come in different sizes, but they all have the same lid. My husband and my kids, they think these are just the cat's meow and they love not having to hunt for lids anymore. While well, I'm cleaning these containers and putting the rest of the chili in the jars, let's talk about another important aspect of homemaking, cleanliness. I wish I could say in this video that I was doing spring cleaning, but I am so not doing that. <laughs> It's been a long time since I was able to do like the traditional spring cleaning where I go out and I clean mattresses and you know, all of that stuff. I can't even remember all of the things on the spring cleaning lists anymore, to be honest with you. <laughs> Years ago, I used to think homemaking wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard to, you know, do the spring cleaning and the fall cleaning and keep a clean home and a tidy home. But then I had more kids. And then I started getting kids in high school. So I'm a homeschool mom with kids in high school all the way down to kindergarten. And homeschooling takes time to do right. If you're prioritizing people and their needs, your home is gonna get really messy. You're not gonna be able to keep a perfectionist home because one of the people's needs in the home is to be able to live there. <laughs> And one of your needs is to get some rest sometimes. So unless you're cutting sleep out, <laughs> you're gonna have a messy home quite often. And the more little kids you have, the more messy it's gonna be. There is no way I personally can keep a perfectly clean home. I'll talk more about the messes in a minute and how I do deal with them. But first, I really just want to drive home that the fact is priority should never be a spotless magazine home. This has been a really hard lesson for me to learn, <laughs> but there is a Bible verse that encourages me so much. Proverbs 14, four says, where there are no oxen, the manger is empty, but from the strength of an ox comes abundant harvests. Applying that to homemaking, if there were no children, the house would be perfectly clean. If there were no husbands, the house would be perfectly clean. <laughs> well, actually, to be honest, because I have ADHD, sometimes I can leave quite awake. <laughs> but my point is that I have always noticed that when the house is the messiest, it's when something really big is happening and a lot of learning is taking place. Usually everybody is having the most fun. So in the ministry of homemaking, remembering that quality, positive moments are what this is all about helps so much. When I forget this, I get really cranky at the kids and the family for making messes in the home that I'm <laughs> constantly trying to clean. <laughs> a certain degree of cleanliness is important though, especially if you have small children and little babies around. There are so many areas of our home that I've had to simply let go of in order to put what's most important first. But filth is... <laughs> not healthy. So there is a certain amount of cleaning that does need to happen. So like with the meal planning and making system, we like to have one for cleaning as well. Routines and systems are your friend. I like to print mine off and keep them in a binder like this. I've created a checklist for daily routines and then a checklist for a kitchen routine, as well as an upstairs and downstairs cleaning routine. Usually we like to tackle these as a family so that it doesn't take too long. It's a great opportunity to learn teamwork, but we also find that with all of the traffic and the people in our house, it works best to have like a daily tune-up in certain areas, like the bathrooms and of course the kitchen. 
And again, this is kind of set into a system that we are all used to. Because of that, it doesn't take very long. I have more to share on this and an excellent tidiness tip for if you've got lots of kids and lots of little kids. But first, I wanna show you the kitchen. This is one of those very brief fleeting moments where I happen to catch it between meals. I wanted to show you the lighting. I added more lights. If you find that you're constantly frustrated in your kitchen, you might check to see if it has to do with the lighting. Apparently, there are three different types of lighting a kitchen should have. Walkway, work lighting, and ambient lighting. Previously, my kitchen only had walkway lighting. I added the new lights and it has been far more inviting and pleasant to work in. In dealing with the constant clutter in toys, I have an excellent tip that we have used for many years. We have what is called a power pickup time. So a couple times a day, if the house starts getting really messy, we take about 10 minutes and run around and get it all tidied up. Everybody combs the room for their belongings that they've left out and puts them away. And doing this a couple times a day only takes 10 minutes, helps keep things far more manageable than it is when we don't do this. Another point too is doing this together. So if I say kids go clean up that room over there that you guys destroyed, it may take them quite a while if I'm not supervising. This is an age specific thing. The older kids, I can of course do this with, but when the kids are around 10 on down, sometimes they just need a little bit more supervision. There is one last important piece I have to share about being a great homemaker. But first, let's talk about what's happening in these scenes. If you save your eggshells and grind them, you can feed them back to your chickens to increase their calcium intake, or you can plant them with your peppers and your tomatoes, and they will help to stop in blossom rot. If you do that though, you have to grind them into a really fine powder, or else it takes a couple years for them to break down into the soil. Lately, I've been thinking about one of the greatest makers of the Bible that we have an example of and it's the Proverbs 31 woman and I've been thinking about how she was essentially helping her husband bring home the bacon so to speak and I've been trying to find more ways to make some income and I realized I have a ton of plants and they're getting way too long I've got like 30 something plants February is when they really take off and start growing more and so instead of making more plants <laughs> that I don't really need right now. I realized I can start some to sell. My oldest daughter will be graduating soon and she recently decided she wants to be a homemaker and an artist for her career. So she's been taking special note lately of my activities. Um, she totally hijacked my idea and she decided she's going to do the same. Honestly, I am delighted that she is learning how to be industrious at such a young age. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the kitchen, my other daughter has decided she wants to be a baker and have a bakery when she grows up. So we have been getting cookies galore. Look at how perfect these are. I think she may have a future in this. And over here, she made some English toffee bars. She still needs a quite a bit of help in the kitchen since she is still learning. So it's been nice to have the extra quality time in the kitchen with her. Speaking of teaching children, this brings me to my next important point in being a great homemaker. I believe that part of the ministry of homemaking is helping to take care of the people's spiritual needs within our home and care. So while I make dinner, that is a dish I do not have a name for. <laughs> so you're just going to have to watch and take notes, but really quickly, I'll just tell you, I've got a beef shank bone in here. I have seared it on all sides. I've sauteed some onions and this is some nice red wine. And I'm just going to simmer this down for a few minutes and add my herbs in the shank and then I'm gonna slow roast it all day long. Let's talk about this very important aspect of being a great Christian homemaker. If we are Christian homemakers with children, then one of our top priorities is supposed to be teaching those children. There are so many Bible verses commanding parents to teach their children. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Deuteronomy 6, six through seven. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. We are supposed to be and commanded to be teaching our children consistently and persistently. So I think that simply put, 
To be a great homemaker is to remember these things. Number one, it's all about the people, the hearts, and serving our families and the people that come through our home and prioritizing their needs, spiritual and physical, but also to remember that we too are part of the home. And it's really important to make sure we are not putting our spiritual and physical needs at the very end of the list, because it really is true. If you are sick, you can't take care of it. Anybody. So in this ministry of serving our families, it's also important to remember to teach them to be able to stand on their own two feet. There's an important balance that needs to take place because we don't want the end result to be kids completely incapable of taking care of themselves and their future families, teaching them important life skills that they're going to need. And these are all important. There is going to be a lot of us mothers learning to be less selfish. There's going to be a certain amount of dying to self, but there is a balance that needs to take place. We are not martyrs to be <laughs> sacrifice chasing after our families and spoiling them necessarily. <laughs> Again, the point is to love our families and care for them and teach them so that in the end they have executive functioning skills and can accomplish their goals and life callings and dreams. So in this scene, I got a new pen case. I've never had one before. One of my favorite things on Sunday mornings is to cozy up on the sofa with my coffee and my planner and jot down some goals for the week ahead. And I've been eyeing this pen case for quite some time thinking it would be a lot easier to do that on my sofa, all cozied up if I had a pen case instead of an actual pen cup like I normally have. Before I close this video, I wanna show you guys the homeschool planner for those of you that are homeschooling out there. I am a second generation homeschool mom. My oldest is getting ready to graduate, so I've been doing this a while. In this planner, I have included all of the things that I have found most useful in a planner, plus a couple other things that I know other people like to have. To start with, I'll show you the weekly lesson plan pages. You can fit up to six children on these, or you can do what I like to do and use one sheet per child. So I like to use the whole spread for one child. That way the child can actually go and look at the weekly lesson plan and see what they're supposed to be doing without me. And then they don't have to wait on me if I'm helping another child. They can be more independent and move through things at their own pace with more independence. We have extracurricular activity pages that you can fill in or your older kids can fill this in as they take on extra activities through the week. I've got quarter pages. The way I use these is up at the top, I circle whichever quarter we're in, and then I fill in the blanks below in the boxes with what we will be doing for that child per quarter. This daily checklist is optional. I like to write in each little section whatever the subject is and have the child go and check it off as they get it done. We like this because my kids like the checklist. If you like to keep things super simple, this is gonna be for you. This is a daily routine tracker. You can use this in place of the checklist. You can use it for yourself if all of the children are small or you could use it for older kids that are more independent. It's very flexible. We've got lots of other checklists that could be used for students or for you as the teacher. This is the current studies page. I really love this page for just keeping track of everything. So we write down the subject, all of the subjects they will be doing for the year. And then across from that, I write down what the resources or curriculum will be for that subject. This is an alternative weekly planning spread. So you can use this in place of the other one if you have a lot of small children but no older ones that are independent yet. These can be really nice for group studies. And again, if your children are not very independent yet. I do not use an attendance tracker simply because I use my weekly planning pages as the tracker. They're dated and they show the days that we've been doing school. So for me, an attendance tracker would be just redundant, but I know a lot of people out there do need and like to have an attendance tracker. So I've got that in there. This is a great tracker, which becomes increasingly important as the kids go up the grades and then mostly in high school. This right here is something that makes my planner extra special. This is a 12 year or remaining years goals sheet. This will help you to make sure you teach all of the important subjects, the core subjects, and all of the things that you want to teach over the course of the years instead of, you know, getting to eighth grade and realizing, oh, you forgot to teach 
something that you wish you had. So you use one of these per child and you simply check off each box what you want to teach and the year you want to teach it or the years you want to teach it. With this sheet, you could literally sit down, plan out your child's entire education within just a few hours. Of course it would or should it be just a rough idea because as you go along, things will very likely change. Better curriculums may end up coming out that align with your family better. So again, this is just to help you get a rough idea of what you will be teaching and when. You guys, thank you for watching this video. I will link to my planners and some of the products that you saw in this video below in the description box. Thank you so much. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.